got that. Yeah. Quite a lot to do. The motion that we see when springs move is a special type of motion in physics uh, called simple harmonic motion. So it's motion where it goes, you know, up and down like this or back and forth like this. Can anyone think of other examples of motion that's like this? Piston, yeah. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's like a spring going up and down. Uh, pendulum is the other one going left and right then. Yeah. Or like a string like something like Something like this, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like with circular motion, it's a special type of force that causes this motion. So we have a definition for simple harmonic motion. If an object is undergoing simple harmonic motion, then the force is directly proportional to the displacement and acts in a direction opposite of that displacement. What it is actually, I don't think so. I'm not sure. Mm, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, you wrote that down? Yeah? Yeah? <coughs> oh dear. Right. So, in the example of the spring, what happens is, as the spring gets stretched further, what happens to the force? Force get bigger or smaller? Mm-hmm. And if I pull the string this way to the window, which way is the force trying to pull it? The opposite. So that's why I say in this, it's opposite. Okay. And what's the meaning of the word proportional? It's the same. Mm, not quite. Nearly. Nearly. The displacement is horizontal, and so does the force. Yeah, but in a very special way. Yeah, so meaning like if the distance is doubled, then the force is doubled, so like linear manner. Okay, you have this written down? So imagine a spring pulled out and then released. Do you know, before I show you, I'd like you to try and draw what you think the velocity time graph would look like. So if you take a spring and you pull it out and you release it, what might the velocity time graph look like? I'm just, I wonder if you could picture what it would look like. Try drawing it. Yeah, just, if you pull the spring out and you let go and it starts to move, what would the graph look like, velocity time graph? Let's see what you can come up with. Sketch it in.
continue that graph, what happens next? Can I see what you drew, Regina? Ah, you're nearly finished. You can show me. Don't be shy. Let's see. Not too bad. Dorian? Mm, not too bad. Not too bad. A lot of you have the right idea. Uh, that's what would happen in real life, yeah. What have you got, Harry? Nothing? Okay. The graph would look like this. I know in real life. I know in real life it would look like that. I think a few of you have got the idea that it'll go fast and slow and fast and slow and up and down. What's wrong, Dorian? Don't look happy with this. Yeah, but the speed. So at the beginning, it's going slow, fast, fast, slow, slow, stop. Faster, faster, faster. You know, a spring going up and down. What happens to its speed? Oh, okay. Look, you're all, all of you are so picky. I know in real life it will do this. I know that. No friction for the moment. Yeah? Okay. You're thinking too accurately. Okay. Um, if you can sketch this in your notes, if you didn't get this. Got this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There are three terms in simple harmonic motion that is also in circular motion. They are frequency. It has the same meaning. You remember frequency? Yeah. T also has the same meaning. And interestingly, omega, which has a different meaning, because it's still a speed, but we might say, what does it mean? Because the simple harmonic motion is not moving in a the circle. There's no angles. So I'll give you an example of what I mean. So if you had something moving in a circle, and let's say the omega is one radian per second, what does that mean? Yeah. Now, if I had something moving in simple harmonic motion, going like this, okay, and I said the omega is one radian per second, what does that mean? One second to do that. To do what? Because where's the radian? To oscillate the earth. No, let's nice try, not this. See, it's not as clear, is it? Oh, it takes one second yeah. to, uh, to, to rise to more. Yeah. Mm, not quite that. See, it's, it's hard. It's not clear what the meaning is. This picture, I find, is, is kind of helpful. So you can all imagine that this is moving in a circle, and this could have an omega of one radian per second. So that means in one second it moves one radian. This pushes a piston that's going back and forth. What's the um, uh, motion here? It's simple harmonic motion. Now, if you're saying that this has an omega of 1, it's like saying the wheel that drives it has an omega of 1. That's one way you could understand it. Another way which my teacher explained to me, um, the example he gave, so imagine you have something, uh, a disc here, and uh, on it is like a candle. 
and here is the wall and you could see the flame here on the wall and then it moves to the left and then it'll move back to the right so the flame is going left and right so to say that this has an omega of one radian per second is to say that this wheel has an omega of one radian per second there is there is a relationship between simple harmonic motion and circular motion you can actually link them together okay uh, is that okay yeah have you seen this before no so they do link together you see this is why we study them together there's an animation you can look at later that's helpful so okay we've got some terms uh, equilibrium or origin that means the center of the simple harmonic motion so if this is moving in simple harmonic motion the equilibrium will be in the middle Okay. The next one is the amplitude. What's the amplitude? Yeah, it's related to this. Yeah, so precisely. So look at my hand. Imagine this goes up 10 centimeters, then down 10 centimeters, then down 10 and up 10. So it's going. Yeah, so what would you say the amplitude is? 10 centimeters. Yeah, up 10, down 10. Okay. Velocity, you know this. Angular frequency, we know this. Frequency, you know. Periodic time, we know. You might want to write the first two down. Oh, maybe. Would be usual. Got that? Continue? Mm -hmm. So, when the mass is at its maximum displacement, it's at rest. So it has no kinetic energy, right? It has only potential energy. As it starts to move, its potential energy gets converted into kinetic energy. When it's at its origin, it has no potential and only kinetic. This is when it's traveling fastest. So this is what the energy graph looks like. Now, just have a look here. Um, when it's maximum displacement, you see it has no kinetic energy. It's zero. Then as it starts to, uh, as it starts to move, it gets faster. So what happens to the kinetic energy? It increases. And it's a maximum kinetic energy when it's at the origin. So if you think about it, here's the center. And it's going like this. Okay? Starts here, no kinetic energy. Then faster, 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 fastest, maximum kinetic. And then what happens next? Decrease, decrease, decrease no kinetic. Okay. So that's why the kinetic graph is shaped like this. The potential energy graph is opposite because when you have no kinetic, you must have lots of potential. And then when you have maximum kinetic, then you must have no potential and so forth. 
So the potential graph is in the opposite direction. And on the top is total energy, when you add the two together. Why is total energy constant? Conservation of energy, yeah. So this graph, they sometimes ask you to draw on the exam. It's not very difficult. The only thing that's missing from this graph that I would include is I would write here minus amplitude and plus amplitude, plus A and minus A. Other than that, the graph is fine. Total energy. You've got that? Continue. Yeah. Diego? You got that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now here's some more graphs. Um, you don't have to add them to your notes because I think you have the idea. The first graph is displacement, and you notice it's you know the same, up, down, up, down, up, down. Velocity, up, down, up, down, up, down. And acceleration, up, down, up, down, up, down. So it's a simple harmonic motion has this back and forth to it. But now on to the equations. Now some of these equations are the same. Have we seen this one before? It's also the same. Have we seen this one before? It's also the same. This is our first new equation. This is for acceleration. It's minus omega squared times x, or s, the displacement. Why do you think the minus is there? Um, not because necessarily it's decreasing. Yeah. The minus... The job of the minus here is to tell me the acceleration is in the opposite direction to the displacement. So in other words, if it's moving right, the acceleration is left. If it's moving left, the acceleration is right. Next formula. Now, let me just explain what I mean here. So, ah, Stephen... I'm mixing my letters. Sorry, I wrote S here and then I wrote X here. They should be the same thing, of course. Careless. Okay. So, if you look, please, for a moment, um, there's two situations for simple harmonic motion. Either it starts at the end and goes like this, or the other situation is it starts in the middle and goes like this. Okay. If it starts from equilibrium, that means the middle, then the formula for S is A sine omega t. But if you have a situation where it starts on the right, so actually if you're looking at me, it starts on the right and goes to the left, then you use cos instead of sine. Okay. In the exam actually usually cos because usually the problem begins like this they would say somebody pulls a spring and releases 
it's usually cos. Okay. Is that okay, Zach? Yeah, Harry? Yeah. The next formula is for the velocity. And again, it's very similar. Again, the reason is um, no, the reason is I need to make sure I get this right for how you're looking at it. So you're looking at me here, and it starts at the equilibrium, and this direction is left. From your point of view and this direction is right so usually when we consider it starting from equilibrium we imagine it moves to the left that's just if you know the way you can choose which direction is plus and which direction is minus you usually set the problem up so that when it starts from equilibrium the first thing it does is go to the negative direction Okay. Even if in real life it went to the right, you would just call this direction minus, you know. Um, again, don't worry too much because, uh, oh sorry, sorry, no, I'm, I, I'm not feeling well today, I'm losing my mind. <sighs> Let me try that again, but with pictures. Why am I using my hands when I have a perfectly good writing pad here? Sorry. I'll make this clear via diagrams. So I'll just for the moment go back to number four here. Okay. So. If it starts from the equilibrium. I don't know why I'm telling you lies. I'm very sorry. If it starts from the equilibrium. It'll go first right and then left. And we'll say x then is a sine omega t and v is a cos omega t. Uh, because it'll begin by going to the right and you can, uh, that must be because the v is positive. Now, if it starts at the equilibrium, that, at the amplitude, we usually imagine it starts on the right. So that makes x equal to a, sorry, a cos omega t. And the reason now, Zach, you're asking me for the minus a omega sine omega t. Why does this formula have the minus in it if it starts from here? Well, what's the first thing it does? It heads to right to left. So the speed must be negative. And it'll go like this, and then turn around and go back here. So as a general rule of thumb, we should just say the first velocity from the amplitude is in the negative direction. Yeah, so <coughs> if it starts from equilibrium, we imagine the first thing it does is head right, then left. Yeah. And if it starts not from the equilibrium, we usually imagine it starts from the right and heads to the left. Okay. And this sorry, this is what I was trying to say a moment ago. Even if in real life it started say over here, it's much easier to then imagine that this side is positive and this side is negative. So here you would say s equals maybe two, whereas here you would say s equals minus two. The reason for doing that is because these formulas only work for these two situations where it starts in the middle and heads right 
or it starts at the far right. If you start having it do things like start here or worse, somehow starts in the middle, bet between the middle and the end, then the formula changes a lot. Okay, so it's much, much easier if it either starts in the middle or starts at the right. And if it starts in the middle, it needs to head right. Okay. Usually in the exam, you actually have this situation. Because like I said, what usually happens is you would have something like a, a spring and somebody comes along and pulls it and then releases. So it's usually the second picture anyways. Okay, sorry about that. I hope that's clearer now. The next formula, another formula for velocity. Uh, look at how bad your teacher is today. He mixed in X and S again. Uh, whichever letter, pick one and stick to one. Uh, which do you prefer? S, okay, fine. If this is what makes you happy, then you can use S. Now, can you, somebody tell me, um, why would you use this formula instead of the last formula? Like, what's the advantage or disadvantage? I mean, the, so why do we need two formulas for velocity? One has, time. One has time and the other has displacement. displacement. So, if I ask you how fast is it going when t is 2, then you use this one. If I said how fast is it going when, or not when, where x is 2 or whatever, or s is 2, you use this one. In other words, this is for the velocity when you know the time, and this is for the velocity when you know the position. Yeah. But there's a small problem with this formula. It has a plus and a minus in it. And the reason is, a disadvantage of this formula is it, can't tell, it cannot tell you the direction. So the plus and minus is there is because you need to decide which to choose. Um, so, you know, you might have to look at the picture and figure out if it's moving left or right, if, you know, if they want the velocity. This formula can't tell you the, um, the direction, can't tell you if it's plus or minus. That's a disadvantage of this formula. So that's why I wrote plus or minus. Now, if they ask you for the speed, doesn't matter then. You don't care about the plus or the minus. But if they ask you for the velocity, then you need to make a decision. Okay, yeah, is that okay? Uh, this is the formula for potential energy. What's the potential energy when S is zero? It's zero, that's what we said. And um, this is the formula, oh, <laughs> I'm not giving you the formula for kinetic energy because you know what it is. What's the formula for kinetic energy? A half mv squared, yeah. No, um, S represents the distance from equilibrium, which doesn't necessarily mean the length is zero. Do you know, like if this was the spring here, yeah. and it's going up and down, then S equals zero might represent this position. Yeah. yeah we'll have a look at some examples. Continue. In the real world, this is what happens, right, Diego, Zach, and Dorian? Because uh, you drew all your graphs like this, I think, didn't you? Or, did, or Gina, did you draw it like this earlier as well? Or? No. Um, so, of course, in the real world, this is what happens, because the spring starts to slow down and stops. In physics, we call this process damping. Or is it three syllables? Damping in? Damping? I don't know. Um, Want to do a dictionary check? Yeah, why not? I know from cause. Damping or dampening? 
They have dampers, yeah, but how do you pronounce it with the ing? Dampin? Dampin? Sounds a bit weird. Dampin. 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 No, Dampin. Oh, it is Dampin. Okay. Two syllables. Yeah. Uh, so the meaning is to, sl uh, to you know, slow it down like this. Dampin. Yeah, okay. This is what happens in the real world. So sometimes in the exam they might say draw uh, the behavior of the spring if it's experiencing damping so you know you could draw something like this that would be fine so you have this one from earlier don't you diego or did you scratch it out oh okay all right i was going to say you could have just written the name above it Say again? It's, it's not an action, it's like how you would you call it? A representation. What's a representation? Like, like the graph is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Convergent. It's converging to the equilibrium. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got that? Now. The formulas I gave you are not for this situation. In fact, the formulas for this situation are very difficult. Um, if you're going to study physics next year, you might look at the formulas for this situation. What, what did you say you're doing next year? Architecture, is it? And you're doing next year what? Maybe computer science. Computer science. Computer science. Computer science. Mechanical engineering. You'll definitely... Dampen is an important thing for mechanical engineering, like in cars especially. Now, in computer science, you will, I believe, study this because it's a common computer assignment program to write a program to mimic this behavior. You know... Because I did um, a computer class on my maths degree in third year, and one of the assignments, if I remember, was to write in, in C, or yeah, in the programming language C, uh, a, 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 a program that will tell you the motion of this. So it's, it's like a little program that loops, and each time it loops, the height gets uh, smaller. So the screen just displays the height. So it would say, at one second, the height is this. At two seconds, the height is this. And you just see it going up and down like this. So even if you're doing computer science, they might make something like this a assignment for you where you have to write a program to mimic this behavior. Using a function. Using, function, uh, using a for loop, I would say. And perhaps even writing a function that give you the height at a particular time. Yeah, yeah, so... It has. It's nice to know these words when you're sitting in a lecture, and the teacher might just say, "Oh, dampen," and you know, expect everyone to know it. You know? Uh, mechanical engineering, uh, as Zach said, it's used in the suspension of cars. You know, when the car goes over a bump, you've all experienced the car wobbles and then quickly enough levels back out. So it's because the springs above the wheels are dampened. Do you know what do they use as the? Is it just the, the spring, or sometimes it's a hydraulic, isn't it? Some sometimes kind of fluid. You have, like, sometimes you have, they have air. Sometimes it's just air. Sometimes it's, it's hydro, yeah. It depends on the, of the situation, like for off road cars and like rally cars. Oh. Like really beefy, like spring. Beef. And, yeah, like and a, 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 a liquid of some yeah. kind, an, an oil, and yeah. And a reservoir. Oh, even more dampen. Yeah, okay. The, what causes dampen? What's the cause of it? In this picture, like 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 a spring, what would cause it? it just wants to. Yeah, but what's the cause of the dampen? What's making it dampen? It's just usually friction. 
Something is slowing it down. Okay, now this one here, um, this one's a bit tricky. Uh, I hope you can see, oh, it's not very clear. Maybe I'll just draw it again here as a separate picture. Make it a little bit clearer. So imagine you have um, one large oscillator here, and maybe this is the equilibrium, and it's going back and forth like that. And then you have, um, well, let me draw it again. I want to, I'm going to put a little engine here or something. I don't know what the heck it is, something. Anyways, um, and this is going back and forth like that. Okay. And then um, maybe I have something else here and this is going back and forth like that. So this has an amplitude, I'll call it A1. It has a frequency, F1 I'll call it. It has an omega one and so on. Okay. Um, this one here says has a different amplitude, has a different frequency, it has a different omega. Okay. So this guy here, he's just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And this guy here is going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now what I do is I connect them. So maybe I, I connect a spring here. Oh, and this guy will say is stronger. Okay, so this one is like, a, like in my picture here, it's a big one on the left and a small one on the right. Okay, so the, this one on the left is going to influence the one on the right. Now, also the one on the right will influence the one on the left, but because of the size difference, we won't consider that, okay? We'll just say that this guy is uh, putting some kind of force on the other one because of the size difference. So my question is, uh, these guys will change. Now, what I really want to do is change the A2. So I want to make this have more amplitude. My question is, uh, what should I what should I do here to influence this? How should I change the motion on the left to make the biggest change in A2 on the right? I want this to be really going far left and right. So maybe I could make this one move more left and right. Maybe I could make the frequency higher. Uh, T as well. I could think about changing T. In your mind, what would I change here? to make the biggest change in the amplitude. What do you think? Change F to be the same. Change F to be the same, very good, yeah. So, some people might think, oh, if I want to make this really go nuts, I should make the F here very big. Make the, the one on the left move a lot. <laughs> but it turns out, the best thing you can do to make this as big as possible here is to match the frequencies. So if you can get the one on the left moving at the same frequency as the one on the right, then the one on the right will start to spread out. That's what will happen. Okay. There's a name for this in physics, this process where you match the frequencies that cause a greater amplitude. Does anyone know this name? Oh, you look like you are thinking really hard about this. Which Pokemon does it sound like? Um, <laughs> oh, it doesn't sound That's like bad. it. It sounds more like a musical instrument. Mm -hmm. Something that you would play in prison. Prison? Yeah. Harmonica? Yeah, so just change that into a physics word. Harmonics? Harmonic, yeah. Yeah. So there's a word to describe this matching called harmonic. So if you can match the frequencies. Now you can see this happen um, most in, yeah, I'll give you an example. You would have learned in chemistry that everything is made up of atoms, mm -hmm. right? Did you also learn in chemistry that these atoms are vibrating? Did you learn that in chemistry mm -hmm. this year? Yeah. Anyways, if you picture something like um, a glass, uh, I don't know, whatever glass is made of, there's all the molecules. Each of these molecules is actually vibrating. It's, 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 they're shaking like this. 
and the motion is simple harmonic motion. So each of these guys, they have their own, the same frequency. So I'll call it frequency of glass. And every material has a frequency. So this wood, you think, oh, it's not moving. Well, if you were to look really closely, you would see all the carbon going like this, vibrating. A very small distance, like 10 to the minus 10, you know, really small, okay? If you force some energy onto it, like sound, Yes, you see where it's going. If you can match the frequency of the sound to the frequency of the glass, you'll get a harmonic, meaning that these amplitude will increase. The amplitude will increase so much, the glass breaks. That's what's happening. Okay. Another famous example, um, in London, I remember there was a bridge, I think it was called the Millennium Bridge, and uh, the bridge is a suspension bridge so it, it hang it was hanging from like two pillars or whatever and the frequency of the the bridge was i think it was um one hertz something like this now this was a problem because when the people were walking across it you think about your your, your walking is a simple harmonic motion because you're walking in a cycle you know you're going left right left right left right so when you look at the ground the energy on the ground you know it's kind of like a big and then less and then none and then big less as you know because you, you put your foot down a little bit more force less force no force and then your next foot goes down and your foot is always touching the ground right you're never in the air with both like so so it, it, it's always switching between force on and off. We kind of walk at about this frequency. So what would happen? All the people would walk across it, and what would happen to the bridge? The bridge would start going. Hmm. So uh, the bridge started to swing quite a lot, actually. I think it was swinging by two meters. So they had to close the bridge and fix it because. People don't like walking across bridges in the city centre that start to sway. Right? So harmonics uh, is usually it's usually a problem. You usually don't want harmonics, usually, because you don't want one system to interfere with another system. Okay? So yeah. is that the same that happens with wind? Yep, bridges? there was the same problem with... Uh, oh. There was actually a bridge in the space that... Yeah, was what's it called? I can't remember it. It was about a hundred years ago, yeah. But the the wind had a frequency that matched the bridge, so the bridge was going bridge. nuts. Yeah, I I I, 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 don't have YouTube. I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, yes, I cannot remember what that bridge is called, but you're right. Um, it it uh, happened before. So, like I said, for engineering, it's something to be careful about. You know. Uh, now I want to go back to this situation. So, if the frequency is bigger then you get less amplitude. And if the frequency is less, you also get less amplitude. It's only when it matches that you get the most amplitude. So there's a graph here that you would need for the exam. So can you see here, what you're saying is at the right frequency, can you see this? At the right frequency, you get the most amplitude. If you are too big, you'll get less amplitude. And if you're too small, you've got less amplitude. But there's a perfect frequency for the most uh, amplitude. And this situation is what's called the forced harmonic oscillator. Because what's happening is one guy is forcing motion onto the other. Now, they have asked students to draw this graph before. We don't have multiple choice in our exam.
What's this subscript on A for? Oh, it's just F zero. My um, last night, my tooth really started hurting, and I was just thinking earlier today that there's a bit of a harmonic motion going on because the pain is kind of strange. It spikes really high, and then it goes down for about an hour, and it spikes back up. So I was just thinking, you know, it's periodic time is one hour, it goes up, comes back down, goes up. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what's triggering it. But usually I would have thought if your tooth was sore, it would be continuously sore. Yeah. It's like every hour it goes, and then for about 10 minutes and then comes back down. It can be like that. Everything is swollen or high, and then you're... It's possible, because I do have... Relax yes, yeah, it's possible that I have an illness that's affecting it, because I feel a little bit sick, because I'm coughing a little bit. So you're right, maybe there's some kind of... a. Uh, yeah, like grabbing effect going on. So that's also a simple harmonic motion. It's just the time is quite long, like one hour periodic time. Uh, simple harmonic motion is a, actually a, a common type of motion. You know, a lot of things have this sort of back forth behavior. Uh, another famous example of simple harmonic motion is the tide. You know, at the ocean, when you look at the height of the tide, it goes up. Oh, that too, obviously coming in and out. Oh, yeah, That's true. yeah, but the tide itself, you know, uh, every twelve hours, isn't it? it it's really high, six high tide. Is it six hours high yeah, tide? Six hours and then one hour, six hours. One hour. How many times a day do you have high tide? Is it once or twice? Uh, twice. Yeah. Twice. Well, it depends on actual the days because sometimes it's twice and then you have one and then. It it's every twelve hours. hours. Uh, kind uh, of, yeah. yeah, it has to be every 12 hours. You have high tide, then low tide, and then back to high tide. Yeah, this motion is simple harmonic motion as well. It's just it's just a very slow, simple harmonic motion, but nonetheless, it's simple harmonic motion. Is it a heartbeat? Yeah, I'd say you could approximate that as simple harmonic motion. Yeah, Anything that has a back forth, you know... You could at least approximate it as simple harmonic motion. You know, the earth obviously is spinning and it's also moving around the sun. But the earth is also wobbling as it moves around. And this is simple harmonic motion. Now, how much of a wobble? Uh, I think the amplitude is one meter. So it goes out a meter and in a meter. Now, why do you think this wobble is here? Anything, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, possibly, but I think the result might be because of meteorite strike, you know, what killed the dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think about it, if this is moving around in a circle and then all of a sudden something comes in and goes smash, then it's going to set this in uh, motion as it goes around. Or anything else that would hit it, you know? Huh? Yeah, because it's not damped. Why is it not damped? Because it's a vacuum. There's no friction. So it'll, it'll continue like this. You know? There's nothing really to slow it down. Uh, it's just interesting. So uh, it'll continue like this until the sun is gone, I would think. Yeah. All right. Or something else hits it. <laughs> Makes it worse, perhaps. Okay. Um... What example do I want to do? Maybe not this one. Uh, got three examples. Oh, I could do this one. A boy pulls at a spring five centimeters and releases. The spring begins to vibrate. It takes 0 0.5 seconds for the spring to complete one oscillation. Okay, so what does the five centimeters represent here? Yeah, but more than just that. The amplitude. Because if you think about it, if I pull the spring five centimeters, this is the most it can travel. You never pull a spring five centimeters, let go, and it moves more, right? 
So the five centimeters is the amplitude. Okay. What's the 0 0.5? The periodic time. Yeah? And I have two questions, which I think you can do. The first one is, what's the omega? So what formula should I use to get the omega? 2 pi over t, yeah? And then, how fast is the spring moving after one second? The speed. Now, is this motion beginning from the equilibrium or from the far right? The far right. Oh, that's like a political group, isn't yeah. it? Like, <laughs> I should rename this lesson Physics Simple Harmonic Motion featuring the far right. Yeah. I get lots of views. I'll put a peppy frog meme or something <laughs> in it at the end. Right, so there's two parts here. Uh, I think you can do this question. So give this one a go. Let's see if you can get it. forgot to say but your calculator again must be in radian mode for these formulas radian mode for these formulas Okie dokie. Okie dokie. What's the first answer? What's the omega? Yeah, about 12 something, was it? No, it's definitely about 12. Yeah, what did you get? 12, so 12.6 radians per second. Problem, Zach? What did you get? No. You got it? Diego, did you get it? Oh, I didn't. I was doing something. Harry, did you get omega? Yeah. What did you get? Uh, 12.5. Good man. Lynn? Yep, yep, yep. Regina? Yeah, okay. Now, what about the next one? How fast is it going? What formula do I use there? Yeah, A omega, yeah, negative A omega sine omega t, isn't it? I make sure you're in radian mode. What you get? Negative zero point. No. And because I'm asking how fast, that means I kind of want the speed, so I don't care about the minus. So okay. if you drop the minus, what would it be? Zero point. Zero point two two. Two two, two two eight meters per second. So I don't have. So we don't have to write the negative in there. Well, no, it depends on the question. Uh, so because I said how fast, how fast in English means the speed. Oh, you put me in a tough situation there. <laughs> Would I take a mark away if you wrote me in a minus? Mm. I might not, but if I'm having a bad day, I might. You just wouldn't know. You want to be careful, okay? What answer did you get, Harry? Zero point zero. Zero point three. Oh, why are we all getting different answers? Same t to 
Does it become a zero zero part? Okay. Yeah, you put the to zero. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So what do you get, Zach? Zero comma three one four. Ugh. I thought you said two. I got two. What did you get, Regina? What'd you get? Oh, same as Harry. Okay, let me write it down. V equals minus A omega sine omega T. What's the A? 0 0.05. And I don't really care about the minus. What's the omega? 12 point... Yeah, 12 point... 56. And it's sine... And what's the T? 1. 1. One. Because I say, how fast is it going after one second? All right, so what's this? So it's possible you all got it wrong. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. This is what makes me sleep so well at night. It could be zero. Mm -hmm. Or ne what, what did you get, Dorian? 2 point, so it's going quite, yeah. So it's nearly zero. It's going quite slow. Are you in degree mode? No. Dorian, are you in degree mode? No, but I use 12.57. What did you get exactly, Zach? I used 4 pi and I got zero. Oh! I understand what's happening now. Yeah, your answer is sl is more accurate because you used four pi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so really, it's supposed to be zero. If if you, if you use four pi here, it's because of the round and that it's not quite zero. If yeah. you use twelve point five six, it's negative four comma zero 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 seven one. Okay, okay, okay. Times okay. ten to the minus three. Um, I think in the exam the answer should be zero. In fact, uh, you don't have to do it like this because what did you say the periodic time was? Half a second. Yeah. yeah. It begins at rest. True. Half a second later, where is it? No. No, it's on either side. It, no, it's back at the start. Mm -hmm. No, think. Oh, it's 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Yeah, so look. So it is way. It starts here. Big T is half a second. So half a second, it does this. That rest again. Half a second again. Because I said, how fast is it going after one second? One second is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5. So it does this. It goes one oscillation, two oscillations. Back at rest. So that's why it's exactly zero, it should be. Yeah. Uh, confused. I'm okay. Oh no, but she's not. She looks very confused. Are you okay? Can you I mean the <laughs> Okay what? Did you draw the velocity time graph? So yeah, yeah, the velocity time graph is the other way of doing it. So Velocity, time. T is 0 0.5 seconds. And I want to know what after one second is the velocity. Okay. So it begins at rest. Here. And then what happens? What's the speed? Positive or negative? Uh, no, try again. <laughs> negative, because it's going which way? Left. So, that's half a second. Oh, yeah, sorry, thank you. That's half a second. That's one second. Mm. You're not happy with this. Yeah, I like it. Okay. Hmm? Um, mm -hmm. They usually use the answers for the 
question before. Mm -hmm. But uh, in our classes, we kind of take, like, example, if, the, if A, A is 12.5, yeah. it's yeah. 4. Yeah. Uh, but we sum, but the final answer is 12.6. The D question, they'll use 12.6 instead of 12.5. No, it's like it, it depends on who yeah. wrote the exam. Yeah, they always use just. Would it have like a, a range for the, for the right answers? No? They're, they're, they're jerks. They're jerks. Then you would possibly go zero for everything. They're jerks. The best thing I would do is for calculations use four mm -hmm. and final answer use three. Now, I know what you're saying, that your answer can feed into the next part, mm -hmm. okay? So, um, usually it doesn't yeah. matter. Usually if you put four significant figures into the next answer, you should still get the same. But the odd time it would make a difference. Now, usually what happens is, I mark the student wrong, I send the exam down to UK and I put a little note in the exam, you know, like a little post-it for the moderator. And I would say, student gets right answer, but I had to give them zero marks because it didn't match the marking scheme. And then they usually put the mark in later. But it's not guaranteed because, you know, people are random and sometimes you just get a jerk who wouldn't because they might say, well, it won't affect their final grade. Because, you know, if, if your final grade is 75, then they're just not going to bother making it 76 or 77. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if you were on like a, a, a 59 and that one mark meant that you get a B, then yes, they'd, they'd more carefully read my note. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which I don't like because you either get the mark or you don't. It shouldn't matter, you know. But anyways... You're concerned about would it affect the final outcome. So if you were ever between two grades, it shouldn't be a concern. Okay, can we do the next example? So I give you the frequency, and I give you the amplitude, and I want the omega. I want the maximum velocity and the maximum acceleration. Now, I'll let you try this for a minute before I give you the answer. Before you begin it, Please be careful. The frequency is not 1420, but it's 1420 mega. What power is mega? Four. Six. <laughs> <laughs> so, give it a try. Now, did you get the omega? Mm -hmm. But the next part's a little bit hard. The maximum velocity. Has anyone got any ideas how to get that? Yes, correct.
let's have a look let's have a look so the first one um omega equals 2 pi over t which equals 2 pi over 1 over f which equals 2 pi f mm -hmm. um, which is 2 pi times the frequency so what is this please eight billion Oh, don't give it to me like that. 8.92 radian second. Okay. Now the next part is what is the maximum velocity. So the formula for velocity is plus or minus square root. Sorry, plus or minus a omega root um, a squared minus x squared. Now, the question is, when is the velocity maximum? Uh, Dorian, you figured it out. When do you have maximum velocity? X. At the origin, yeah. when x is zero. zero. And it means the x here is zero, so the formula just becomes omega a. Ah, how did you figure out the hard part, but not the easy part? <laughs> did you not get this? No, I just, it was slim. I haven't done Oh, okay, 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 okay. Um, so when you're ready, uh, uh, 2.93 times 10 to the minus 15. 2.61 times 10 to the minus 5. So that's quite s slow for maximum. But that's not surprising because it's only a little molecule vibrating. It's, it's actually quite big because it's. Well, I suppose so. To yeah, size relative to its size, size, actually. Yeah, it's quite big. 10 to the minus 5. Mm -hmm. It's 10 to the minus 15. That's, that's. Yeah, actually, okay. Yeah. And then the, net, the last part is what's the maximum acceleration? So the formula I'll use for acceleration is minus omega squared x. And uh, Dorian, maybe you might know this one. When would the acceleration be maximum? Acceleration. Yeah. Um, so the axis is what here? Uh, yeah, the amplitude. That's when it'll be maximum. Yeah. yeah. So when you're ready, you can give me this. Yeah, and I don't really care about the minus. Mm -hmm. 10 to the power of? Five. Like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Sorry, the, the right answer is syntax error, according to uh, Zach. <laughs> uh, I think that looks good, yeah. But why is it not like Why is it? Ah, uh, because... Ah, uh, negative. Well, no, I mean, I'm asking for the maximum, so I don't really care about the direction. 2,33 times 10. I just want to know what's the biggest number. It's the maximum. I don't care about the direction. Yeah, 2,33 times 10. Yeah. Okay, is that okay? Yeah. So, you know, it's really just, like with everything in physics, it's really about using the formulas most of the time.
you know. Understanding them. <laughs> Understanding them would help too. And trying to choose them, yes. Yes. Formula 5, I choose you. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's difficult to choose sometimes, yeah. So uh, we've got uh, about five, five or so minutes left. Now, it might seem like we're slightly ahead of schedule because I said I wanted to get the mechanics finished before the break. However, I think we're only ahead because I spent less time on the tutorial because you didn't try the circle questions last night. So, when's our next class? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, I really want to be doing tutorial questions on these two homeworks, the circle and simple harmonic motion. Uh, do you have any homeworks tonight that will take a lot of time? Will it take a lot of time to do? Which one? Oh, um, which one? Oh, the one? Um, an hour. An hour? An hour. An hour. But I was because I was hungry. And I was like, I think. Uh, can you do your best? You can start now. Do as many of these questions from both homeworks. Because um, I... I, I you know, I want to uh, get some more examples done in class after you try them. Yeah. 